there's an interesting case there being reported in the paper today involving the sale of land and whether there was a contract in place or not involving the billionaire John Magner. So John Magner is of the legendary Coolmore Stud fame and obviously well known in horse racing and horse breeding circles. He has brought an action against uh, against a vendor or a proposed vendor of a 751 acre uh, residential tillage farm in County Tipperary. This case now has been admitted to the High Court Fast Track Division. He's claiming that uh, himself and his son uh, and his daughter-in-law um, intend or the current owners of the particular estate the Barn Estate in Clonmel intend to repudiate an agreement to sell the property. The Barn Estate or the owners of the Barn Estate claim that there's no such agreement. The Magners say that the deal for Mr Magner to buy for 15 million euros was hammered out at a meeting in Coolmore Stud on the 20, August 22nd last. Mr Magner was there with his wife and the Coolmore Stud or Coolmore farm manager and one of the current uh, owners and his wife, uh, as well as the auctioneer involved in putting the estate up for sale. The Magners say they understood the property was held on trust, uh, owned by a, a Jersey registered uh, limited company. But the bottom line is the defendants in the case, the uh, party whose land, whose farm was being sought, the owners of the barn, uh, estate are claiming that uh, they will be lodging a defence and they will be bringing an action to strike out the case on the grounds that there's no cause of action. The Magner say it was agreed at the August meeting that the purchase could be executed at the election of Mr Magner by way of direct purchase or through a sale of the entire shareholding in the Barn Estate Limited. They say that the terms of the agreement were recorded in a sales advice note from the auctioneer. Anybody who knows anything about the sale or the legalities around the sale of real estate in Ireland know that the uh, there must be a memorandum in writing of the uh, sale. Otherwise, uh, there probably isn't an enforceable contract. They claim, though, Magners claim that the existence of the sale agreement was acknowledged by the fact that Mr. Magner was granted a tillage license to plough and sow some 650 acres of the estate. There was also a deposit of €250,000 paid to the auctioneer, and Mr. Magner, at the encouragement of the auctioneer, actually transferred the entire €15 million Euros purchase price uh, to his solicitor's client account. Last month, the Magner say that Barn Estate Limited indicated in correspondence from its solicitors that there was no binding agreement over the property. The Magners seek a number of reliefs from the court, including a declaration that the Barn Estate and the Jersey shareholding companies are parties to a contract for the sale of the land or by way of a share purchase agreement. In the alternative, they seek an order for specific performance of the shareholding purchase agreement or the direct purchase agreement and if necessary they're also seeking an injunction restraining the shareholding companies from disposing of the land. Any student of land law etc will look at this case and probably have a view as to whether uh, Mr Magner has an enforceable contract or not and is likely to win his case. But the bottom line is that Section 51 of the 2009 Land and Conveyancing Law Reform Act uh, it sets out the minimum formalities for a legally binding real estate contract in Ireland. Firstly, the contract must be in writing. Section 51 specifically prohibits the institution of legal proceedings to enforce a contract for the sale of land unless the agreement is evidenced by a note or memorandum in writing. Furthermore, the contract should, at a minimum, recite the full description and tenure of the subject property, the consideration to be paid by the purchaser, and the names of the parties in the agreement. So fundamentally, this case is going to come down to whether the commercial court uh, believes or accepts that there is a legally uh, enforceable contract here for the sale of land, or if it 
fails and there is no legally enforceable contract because of the absence of a memorandum in writing setting out the details between the parties which anyone as I say who has studied contract law and has studied property law will recognise goes back to um, a very old act the conveyancing uh, act from way way back 1850 or something and it's updated then in the land and conveyancing law reform act of 2009 It'll be an interesting case to see what the outcome will be. Obviously, there's a lot of money involved there and the estate agent was involved or was there apparently at the meeting and he issued a sales advice note. But remember, when a sales advice note is issued by an estate agent, that's all only an understanding from the estate agent of uh, the deal and the parties, etc., etc. But um, the memorandum in, in writing uh, between the parties is key and um, generally the memorandum in writing is at the front of uh, the standard uh, law society conditions of sale the law society contract the very first page or the second page or the first page after the cover page is a memorandum in writing and generally that is the one that needs to be signed by the parties and then there's a legally enforceable contract however there's a complicating factor here insofar as there's shares involved so i suppose there's an argument there that it's not just um an action for the sale of land it may be characterized as an action for the sale of shares which might bring some different uh, considerations to the case but martin hayden senior counsel for the owners of the uh, state uh, barn estate limited uh, he's looking for uh, to strike out the case on the grounds that there is no cause of action that'll be an interesting case as i say it's gone into the commercial court uh, maybe there'll be some sort of a deal concluded uh, at some stage or a settlement or whatever but it's, say, it's an interesting case and anyone who's an interest in law or property would be keeping an eye on this um, but they'll be looking at the question of the memorandum in writing uh, which is necessary for the formation of a binding uh, enforceable contract for the sale of property in Ireland. Hope you find this useful. If you do, would appreciate if you gave it the thumbs up down below if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening to my podcast, the Irish Law and Small Business podcast on iTunes or on Spotify, I'd appreciate if you left a review. Um, thanks a lot.